What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Hope you had a great weekend. Before I get into this video, it's, it's a couple things I want to address. Hopefully, it's the last time I will have to address it, but I feel the need to address it because usually I'm silent about certain things. I don't respond to negativity and disrespect a lot of times, but this time I'm going to respond to it. Um, two people in particular... But usually there's more, but I block those people. But these two in particular, I feel the need to say something because their comments actually made me laugh. Um, the, the amount of negativity and, and hate and disrespect is, is crazy. It's like people have nothing better to do in their life but to spew hatred and disrespect to people that they don't even know. And to speak on something they don't know shit about. That's what makes me laugh. Like... This chick, I can't even call her a chick. She's like somebody's grandmother. And I don't like to be disrespectful. I don't like to be rude. But when people disrespect me and they do it in such a, a hateful way and I don't even know you and you obviously don't know me, it's, it baffles me because it's like you go out of your way to be so negative for what fucking purpose? You know what I mean? For what purpose? I don't know anything about you. I'm I'm view, I'm just putting out my opinions and saying what I have to say. And you constantly come under my videos or my posts with negativity. And it's laughable. And you're speaking on something you know shit about. Like, you're somebody's grandmother. You're way too old to act the way you act. You need to act your age. Um, I never disrespect anybody, but it's like you, you want to be disrespectful to me. I can be disrespectful back and I can do it 10 times worse. I mean, she calls herself Mercedes or whatever, but she looks like a Buick, you know, and you want to be rude. Um, her and another poster. I'm pretty sure, you know, a lot of people have seen this person's post constantly. Uh, Ruth Albert. You know, I guess that's her last name or fake name, whatever she is, Ruth Albert. You know, asking me about my job and stuff. Do I have a job? Do you have a job? That's the question. You know, don't worry about my personal business, my life. First of all, a lot of people, what people don't understand is a lot of people who post on YouTube, they do have jobs. But a lot of us control our schedules. You know what I mean? My videos are like 15, 20 minutes. You know what I mean? 15, 20 minutes out of my day. How do you know I don't work in the morning? How do you know I don't work at night or early morning shifts? You don't know what I do. I control my schedule. So that's why it affords me to do a video at that specific time because I can, you know, change my schedule to that time. You don't know what I do. It's none of your business. And the reason I say that is because I felt she asked that question to be funny because she tried to disguise it. Trust me, I'm a good judge of character. I know how to decipher bullshit. You know, when somebody's being sarcastic or just being nosy, trying to, you know, be funny. And that's what she was trying to do. Um, trying to disguise, oh, my friend would like to know what you do for a living. No, be honest. You wanted to know because you were trying to be funny. I read a lot of your negative ass comments and a lot of it don't make sense. It sounds like a lot of dribble. But I know how to decipher some of the things that you say and you come off as rude. And I'm going to tell you this one time and one time only, Ruth Albert. You have one more time. I'm going to tell you, like, you keep being disrespectful in the comments. I'm going to disrespect you back. That's just, I'm not BSing around with people anymore. I'm not. Because I've been nice. I'm respectful of people. And I don't like to block anybody. I don't. Um, but this is a positive platform. This is something, you know, for people of the show, fans of the show, to come and talk about the episode. So I'm going to tell you again, keep your comments about the episode. Keep it about the show. Don't keep it about me. It's not about me. I'm giving my opinion, whether you agree with that opinion or not. That's on you. I, I don't expect everybody in the world to agree with what I'm saying. I don't speak about things like it's gospel. You know what I'm saying? I'm giving my opinion from what I see. This is what I see. We all watch the same episode. Maybe you're seeing something different than I am. I don't know. But we all come together and we compare notes. This is what we do. You know what I mean? And it's fun for me to do it. The day it stops being fun for me, I've been doing this for how long? Seven years now? The day it stops being fun for me is the day I stop doing it. Simple. But for right now, it's fun for me. You know, but I'm not going to tolerate people's disrespect. 
that I'm not going to do because I haven't disrespected anyone. So I'm not going to take anybody's disrespect or negativity. You come in here with negativity and disrespect, you can turn around, take that shit somewhere else. Or you can be blocked and reported. And your channel can get shut down, period. You know, this is it's enough hatred and negativity and crap going on in the world. And that's not what this video is about. This is not what these platforms is for. We come up here to speak about the show. Keep it about the show. Keep it positive. You know, whether you have something negative to say about the show, that's your that's your business. You can say whatever you want. You know, you can say, oh, I don't like this show. I don't. You're free. You're free to, you know, feel the way you feel. But keep it about that. Don't keep it about me. So moving on from that, I said what I had to say. And hopefully, you know, it's the end of that. Um, getting into this episode, though. I enjoyed it. It was fun um, for the most part. Nell is batshit crazy, I just want to say. Uh, she continues to be delusional. Um, she was going to tell Michael everything, but I had a feeling she wasn't going to say nothing. I had a feeling something was going to happen to make her change her mind, and it did. Um, when they were talking... Michael got a text, of course, from Carly because she sent him a picture of Sasha holding the baby. Wiley slash Jonah. Um, so, of course, when Nell saw the picture, jealousy took over. You know what I'm saying? Jealousy took over. Nell got jealous. She got mad. And she said, there. now she decided not to tell Michael nothing because he moved on. She tried to disguise it and make it sound like Michael has moved on with his life from the baby. Oh, he don't think about Jonah no more. No, no, no. He moved on from your ass. He didn't move on from the baby and his thoughts about his son. That's the whole reason he's there to talk to you about your child. He moved on from you because you're crazy and he doesn't trust you. You're manipulative. He doesn't want you anymore. He hasn't wanted you for a long time. You know what I mean? Nell is just psychotic. Like asking him all these questions about his new love life and and I'm glad Michael didn't tell her too many details because she doesn't need to know I wouldn't even told her Sasha's name it's none of her business you know what I mean that's not what you're there for you're not there to talk to her about your love life like they need to stop dragging this mess on they'll just need to go ahead and tell the truth because Nell is hoping that only reason she was going to tell Michael the truth was because Shiloh thinks that the baby is his and she was worried about him trying to take their son. That's why she was going to tell him the truth. But now that she find out Michael dating somebody, now jealousy done took over. Now she wants Harmony. She wants to see if Harmony could do whatever she can to make sure Shiloh go to prison so that way he's not a threat to the baby. And she can continue to play games with Michael. Because that's exactly what she's going to do. She's going to keep playing games. Because as long as she holds this information, she has something over Michael. She's going to continue to use it to get Michael to come see her and stuff like that. She's, you know, this is her ace in the hole. Without it, she has nothing. She has no leverage. Right now, this is the only leverage she has. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. Um, Ava. <laughs> Ava and this damn psychic. Listen, that whole scene was everything. I enjoyed it. Um, the psychic got in touch with a lot of dead folk. Connie, of course, AJ, even Helena Cassanine. I said, well, damn. I was mad that she got in touch with Helena and AJ because remember when Sibley couldn't get in touch with Nicholas? That's because he's not dead. But this psychic got in touch with AJ Quartermain and Helena Cassanine. So that pretty much confirms their death because they're on the other side. I said, damn. So you mean to tell me they really dead? There's no coming back? You know what? I don't believe that. I still don't believe they're dead. Here's why. Because even on all my children, remember when Jesse Hubbard was thought to be dead for 20 years and he kept reappearing sometimes as a spirit? And they, they eventually brought him back. So, I, listen, if... AJ and Helena are in the spirit world. Y'all can find a way to bring them back. The hell with that. Because you, you ain't about to tell me AJ going to be dead for life. No way. See, that's why we need some new writers. Because I need Helena and AJ to come back. I need them back. If not for anything else, I need them back. Because this is not... No. Um, 
So anyway, Helena was pissed because Ava knew that Nicholas poisoned Helena. She never told anybody. <laughs> so word to the wise to Ava, you better pray and hope that Helena never does come back because she will slit your wrist. She'll slit your throat because you knew that she hurt. She was poisoned and you didn't tell nobody. So she's pissed off at you for that reason. Kiki, of course, still wants nothing to do with Ava. And she's still pissed that Ava hooked up with a killer and let her guard down and stuff like that and, you know, got with this murder. So basically, Ava had to go back to see Ryan. Why? I have no idea, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be entertaining. It's always fun when Ryan pops up. When Ryan pops up, you know it's going to be hilarious. I'm just saying, you know it's going to be some funny material. Ava, it's, the reason Ava can't let this go, and the reason I feel like more than anything Ava's trying to make peace with Kiki, it's more so for her conscience and her guilt. Because she has so much guilt for the way that she treated Kiki when, you know, before she died. That's what she wants to make peace with, because her conscience, it's like she has this major guilty conscience. And it's not allowing her to be at peace. You know, she could keep saying, oh, she want Kiki to be at peace. No, you really want yourself to be at peace because of the way you talk to her. You called your daughter a whore. You threatened her. You basically damn near made her life a living hell. You did whatever you could to get revenge on her and Griffin. That's why she can't let this go and she keeps hiring these psychics and stuff because it's your peace of mind that's at risk. Because you can't let it go because you know that you did wrong. And you're trying to make it right. But Kiki is not letting her off the hook even from the grave. Kiki's not letting her off. You know, it is what it is. That's why you got to do right by people. Because then when they dead and gone, you know, you got to live with that guilt for the rest of your life. And right now she got to live with it. So it is what it is. You made that bed. You got to lie in it. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. I love the scene with Drew and um, Franco. It sucks that Billy Miller's leaving, but I totally get it. You know what I mean? I can't say that I blame Billy Miller. You know, I hate that when it, when these shows get good caliber actors and actresses and they underutilize them. That's not good. You know what I mean? Like if you get people of that caliber, you have to give them some quality storylines or else they're just going to be dissatisfied and they're going to want out and you're going to lose some good people. You know, you got to stop doing that. Listen. I know I bring this up a lot, but I'm going to bring it up again because I felt like it and the food looked good. That cheeseburger that Franco had was looking good. I'm just saying. I could have sworn I seen a piece of bacon up there with some good cheese. Listen, they got to stop with the food. <laughs> like, that food was looking immaculate. That good cheeseburger, that bacon cheeseburger and them french fries, blazing. That looked so good. But listen, Franco, next time I'm going to need you to put some ketchup on them fries or something. Because I eat my fries plain sometimes, but you got to have some ketchup every now and then. I'm just saying, spice it up. Um, I have a feeling that Franco, you know, Franco keeps thinking that his warning from the psychic means that he shouldn't be driving a car or something. Because um, he might die or get into an accident or something. I think it's a red herring her warning because I don't think her warning is what he thinks it is I think the drive means the drive like that um, that thing that Drew has with his memories on it the thumb drive I think that might be what she's talking about maybe that's what she's talking about because when somebody gives you a warning about something and it's vague and you think you know what it is it's usually something else and I think that's what she meant, but she just obviously she didn't go into details about it. I think that's what she meant. The thumb drive that has all his memories on it. Because him and Drew were talking about that. And he, you know, Drew has that thumb drive in his office. And that's the key to taking Shiloh down. That's the ultimate key. Right there. If prison ain't gonna do it, this is the key. Um I wish Drew would do it. I have a feeling that Franco might somehow get his hands on that thumb drive. He might. I think that might be what the psychic was talking about. But um, anyway, so I Oscar, 
Oscar strikes again from the from beyond the grave. Um, a few months back, he signed a whole bunch of forms to get Drew's war medals, and they were finally delivered today. I thought that was beautiful. That was nice. Um, he got all his war medals and stuff from his time in the Navy. Um, I think that was pretty dope. And I love how Drew was so nice to his assistant because his assistant thought that he was going to be mad about it and fire her and stuff like that. But he he was very generous. He was very nice to her. He told her. He was like, I'm going to give you a raise and you could take a week off paid vacation. I said, well, damn, I wish my bosses was good like that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like who? who a lot of us wish we had bosses like that. I mean, come on now. Pay vacation for a week plus a raise. Get, don't get no better than that. But with Billy Miller leaving, I wonder what's going to happen to Aurora. Like, is he going to sell his half to Drew? I mean, his half to Jax or like, what is he going to do? That's what I want to know. Um, so anyway. Shiloh. Shiloh, Shiloh, Shiloh. So his public defender basically told him that with all the evidence that the prosecution has against him, he's looking at life in prison. But if he takes a plea deal, he's looking at 20 years, he can get out in 14. Of course, Shiloh's not going to take that. Of course, he's not. Nope, he's overconfident as usual, smug as usual, think that he's going to find a way to wiggle out of it. And who knows what he's up to now because he called some friend of his, some old friend, and he talked about he got a job for him. And then he kept having flashbacks of his conversation with Drew about the flash drive. Um, what the hell is Shiloh up to? Is he going to try to steal the flash drive? Like, what is he up to? He got whatever it is, something is turning in that little weird mind of his. Like, he's up to something. Because ain't no way he taking no prison sentence. He's definitely up to something. Question is, what? Like, is he going to have somebody break into Drew's office or, you know, whatever to get the flash drive? Like, who knows with this clown? He is crazy. Like, he just refuses to accept defeat. He refuses. But he is entertaining, though. I will give you that. Like, he's a slippery son of a bee. Really is. Um. So, anyway... I did like the scene of Julian and Willow. You know, Willow decided that she's going to lift the whole ban that she had on Julian not being a part of Willow's life. Because remember, a part of the adoption, that was one of the stipulations. So she's willing to get rid of that stipulation, which I thought was cool. Um, I'm still pissed off with Julian because he knows part of the secret that Shiloh is not obviously the father of this child and that Willow is not the mother of this child. And he's still holding on to this damn secret. I'm like, you could end a lot of problems right now if you would just tell them the truth. You know what I mean? Like, I understand he wants to protect, you know, Lucas's feelings and stuff, but you're just making matters worse, Julian. Tell the truth and stop conspiring with that little jackass Brad and throw him under the bus while you at it. So that way you would take less of the beating. But the more and more you don't say nothing, the worse it's going to be for you because all this progress that he's made with Lucas is all going to be for naught. Because once the truth come out and people find out and Lucas found out that you knew all this time that Willow wasn't the mother, Shiloh wasn't the father, you could have ended all this hell that Shiloh has been putting him through by just opening your mouth. And Lucas would have understood, he would have forgave you, but the longer and longer you keep this secret and when it comes out by some other person or some other method and Lucas finds out, he's going to hate you worse than he did a year ago. He's going to hate you worse. It's going to take you probably even longer to get back in his good graces, if ever. So it's in your best interest to tell the damn truth and shame the devil. I'm just saying. Best interest. But of course, people don't use common sense. Um, so anyway, Shiloh nutty ass overheard Epiphany and um, Bobby talking about the birthday party. I love the way Epiphany handled Shiloh when he was there to get his medical records and stuff. Um, he told me, oh, is there any way you could expedite the uh, process? Epiphany was like, no, this is a hospital. Patient care comes before paperwork. So sit your ass over there and shut up and wait. I love how Epiphany just handle people like she ain't no pushover. And I love it. First of all, Wiley, that's a big ass one year old. I'm just saying he look a little too big for one. Um, he look like he grown. Like that's a big boy for one years old. Um, 
But of course, Shiloh shows up to the birthday party with his birth with his medical records. And of course, everybody wanted him out of the party. And Shiloh proves once again that he cannot fight. Michael beat the hell out of him again, punched him all in the stomach, manhandled him, threw him on the elevator. I'm like, Shiloh, do you know how to fight? Like, you're a big buff looking dude and you don't know how to fight? I say, you got to be kidding me. Like, he stayed getting his ass whooped. Every time he's on, he gets a beat down. I was like, damn, and ain't nobody come to his defense. <laughs> nobody tried to help him, and I don't blame them. Um, Michael was like, okay, let's get on with the party. It's kind of funny and surprising how Carly, Michael, nobody could see none of his features in that baby. I'm like, you don't see none of Michael's features in that child? Like, he ain't got, like, you don't see Michael's cheeks, you don't see his eyes, chin, nose, nothing. You don't see none of Michael's features in that kid. Like, Mike has Alzheimer's and Mike could see that that was Michael's child. How do his own mama can't see that? He himself can't see that. I'm like, how do you not notice? Like, the features, you don't see none of that? The blonde hair, none, like, nothing? You don't see nothing? I'm like, don't you think, not to say it's impossible because it is possible, but Willow and Shiloh have dark hair. They have a blonde baby. Not to say, like I said, it's not impossible. It's possible. But come on now. Y'all don't notice nothing. The rosy cheeks like, come on. He don't look like Michael to y'all. Like, how do you not put two and two together? Like, I'm just saying. And it is shocking, though, that Carly is more, you know, she's backing off more when it comes to Michael and his love life. And I do like that fact that she's not grilling Sasha. She actually likes Sasha. But we all know that's probably not going to last too long when they find out that she's really not Nina's daughter and she's been playing her the whole time. So I'm pretty sure that, you know, that's going to wear off and Carly's probably going to start to not like her as usual. And of course, Brad is worried about Lucas looking at the medical records and stuff and figuring everything out. Julian pretty much told him, well, I mean, he's going to find out eventually, like, you can't stop him from looking at those medical records. He is a doctor, so of course he's going to want to look at him. So, of course, Brad, knowing him, he's probably going to try to come up with some plan to get rid of those records. But, I mean, it wouldn't take much for Lucas to find those records. I mean, you could just go into the records at the hospital and look them up. I'm just saying. But um, anyway, I enjoyed this episode. Wiley's birthday. It was a nice party. You know, everybody was there sipping a champagne named Mimosas. Um, but anyway, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about today's episode. I will see y'all all later. Peace.